Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. You are welcome to the Boomba. It's the morning after the day before yeah. the Super Eagles went ballistic on them. Uh, Bayana, Bayana, or ballistic, actually. whatever. We shall want. <laughs> ah, don't come, don't break that one here. <laughs> I don't want it. Ballistic. Well, anyhow, Nigerians are grooving. We know some of us are wearing green. It was not deliberate. Oh. Yeah, right. This shirt yeah, chose right. me. I did not choose yeah, the shirt. Right. You know, so yes, that's the bar. My name is Shola Rogers. It's okay. It's okay. So oh, uh, name, her name is It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> and After all the mouth, it's okay to come back from yesterday. Ah, y if Nigeria had lost. Are you Nigerian? Ah, Are you oh Nigerian? After that that dragon will not No, we just logged out of Twitter. Ah, I got ah, logged ah, out ah, like ah. two weeks. <laughs> you know? But, and it's not but, South Africa dragon, no. Ghanaian dragon. Cameroon. Cameroonian dragon. Kenya. Kenyan dragon. And go, ah, no, it would have been bad. But it's all good. So this is the Boomba, like we always do. We tell you now, it's music, sports, politics, and everything in between. In between. Everything in between today takes a very beautiful coloration. There's, a, there's an industry that we had told you guys about a couple of months ago that we were going to delve into. And here we are now. We have in-house a professional who really knows his onions when it comes to the real estate industry and creating wealth. He will introduce himself, but uh, it's okay. W has already introduced herself. My name is Ola Tolupo. For people that do not know, my name is Ola Tolupo. You know, the one and only. Why are you looking at me? How many Dolupos do you know? You sound like AI. No, how many Dolupos do you know? I can ask him, how many Dolupos does he know? That was the first time exactly, I Exactly, see? Thank you, sir. There's all Dolupos on Instagram. Yeah, like right. I, and I know yeah, one on Facebook. Right. I actually thought it was Dolupos. It's Dolupos. It's Dolupos. Okay, who coined the name? Ah. I'm mom, no, no. Yeah. I'm mom, no. That's great. I could have been a typographical yeah. error. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. That is funny. It's not. <laughs> You're just jealous. Okay, That's so you already heard his voice, and I'm sure for our viewers who are watching across the globe, you've seen him. And this is his induction into the bar. bar he's yeah. now officially called to the bar. Called to the bar. You okay. see? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, our bar has changed. Our bar has changed. You know, through the years, there was a time when the table was ah. always, you know. Mm. Yeah, oh. you know. Now we just <laughs> have our cups. Coffee. Ah. Cups. Ah. Oh, Coffee. Yeah. Inside <laughs> life. <laughs> Inside this awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the AC is really cold, so. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and he said it awesome because this is Lagos. It is 3 p.m., but you'll be also listening to this at 7 p.m. And uh, remember to like, comment, and share. You heard his voice, but I'll let him introduce himself. My name is Ben Rogers. I'm a real estate developer, an investor, and a builder. You know, um, I focus more on investment properties, properties that generate uh, cash flow. Uh, and I build these properties for my investors. You know, they come to me, they want to make money through real estate. So we produce properties that uh, will give them yearly or monthly income, mm. residual income, so they don't have to uh, leave their 9 to 5 or yeah, any other thing. Leave. It's not really a work, it's not a job. You know, they just earn money from real estate. Uh, recently, we've been doing a lot of that in the U.S. You know, knowing the uh, volatility of the Naira, you know, a lot of our investors, we're building for them in the U.S. We have a couple of projects going on. All right. So you heard him, and we're going to be talking about that. But of course, at the bar, we also keep you abreast of what's going on. We already started the banter talking about the AFCON. And at AFCON, nobody gave the Eagles a chance. Nobody. Really? Nobody gave them a chance. A lot of people had written them off before this tournament, and I think that has worked for them uh, I, because so, yeah. nobody was expecting nobody anything from this team. Yeah, but, you, but, but you also know that you can't really totally blame a lot of people leading up to the um to this afcon um uh, the only i think they started turning the tide when it started with um the um afcon qualifiers because leading up from um the world cup not them not qualifying from the world they cup, didn't turn any they tide it wasn't the wonderful look they the were really great they did so not you can't blame people mm -mm, they didn't even turn any tide the last friendly game 
before yeah, after they still lost they it. They lost their two Premier League games. I think there was a draw. Uh-huh. Then they, so they lost. They, they, lost they, to they play at home and they are p- playing draws with teams that are 40, 50 steps below them. So that's why nobody get, and that has worked for them. It How has worked though? for them because they're not under pressure. The last one, they went with high hopes, and of course, we know how it ended. So when people are not expecting a lot from you at times, it at times it actually brings out the best in, in the people. And I think it worked for this team. And again, another thing that has worked for me is that for the first time since maybe the time of Babangida as president or ruler, there were no issues about money. It's been a long time. I'm t- it's been a long time. Like they 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 they, they had to get one point two billion, mm-hmm. and they got it before the tournament. Before they will be going back up, of everything, yeah, the, the, the management of the team got everything they wanted up front. And their backlog, everybody. Then that, that could be the motivation. Because you I was, get. I was going to ask possible. you that. What what is different? This yeah. Time Why did this go this way? I think that's one of the things that happened because. There were times when you hear the Eagles are going and there's going to be a strike. That the players yeah, will not Yeah, that train. they were not going to play and all that. That case. didn't happen this time because everything was paid for. And Doluqua mentioned the backlog. There were some teams and coaches that were being owed four years back, five years back, and they got cleared by this same government. So if they didn't do anything, I think they've done that one right. Yeah. I don't know what you think about that. Well, you know I'm not um, really a football fan. I, have to I know. Right now, but I watched those two games Osima, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, interesting guy. And, you know, I was wondering, well, are these guys, uh, what did they do? What, what happened? Who got, was, it, was it the coach? But you were telling me recently that, no, the coach has been there. It's, it's, it's been uh, shambolic. I'm still thinking <laughs> okay. what, what went right. To be, to be honest, I think that the Nigerian team individually, because if you pick them from their clubs, yes. they're very fantastic they players. Yeah. So I think that what they always needed was a synergy Somebody that they yeah. didn't have. So I, the f- I think they're finally playing as a team because yeah. if you pick out virtually everybody in that first team mm. in their individual clubs are playing very good football, and then you wonder like, okay, what happened? What happened? By the time you get to to um, your country and then you're you're not doing anything. So it looks like they're finally there's finally some cohesion. When it comes to them, there there is a lot of um, confidence. And all yes, there's a lot of confidence, and number one person with confidence, I think the goalkeeper. There is a level of confidence yeah. that guy brings to the team yeah. that is just superb. Other than the fact that he's very good, actually. Okay, so I was just going to ask you. So, if there has not been a lot of coordination or leadership in the past, mm. is there a new person that came in who was able to put them? They have more time. I know we in Nigeria, we always have that last minute thing of putting yeah. in. Maybe that's one of the problems we have. You, we're not able to plan and put ourselves together and practice. But did that happen this time around? I, I think a couple of things happened. One of the things that worked for them was that um, the, 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 the number one keeper pulled out of the team. He, he was blamed for us failing we to qualify. We bless the Lord. Yes. He's not understand? very good. Let's say so he call his paid his paid. He's not that good. That happened. And now there was this problem with getting a goalkeeper so the guy who was number one before that number one came back and he was fumbling you get and people raised a lot of noise like, no look there are other goalkeepers around there are two own best goalkeepers that were invited one of them finally made it to the team Ojo Oloron Leke who's been a great guy you know but there's Owa Bali Stanley who is based in South Africa Chippa United he's doing very well give him a chance and that was it that changed that angle because yeah. we stopped conceding those cheap goals. We, we were conceding very disgraceful goals. That's <laughs> one. Two, changing the system from the regular 4-4-2 four, four, to a 3-5-2. You get 3 plus 5 is 8. 3 five, two, yeah. Mm-hmm. Before I make a mistake <laughs> on that, you know. So what a 3-5-2 means is that instead of two central defenders, you have three. So those central defenders stay back. Then your wing backs will play defense when you are under attack. That means you now have five defenders when you are under attack. But when you are going forward, those two guys will join the attack. So strategy. So strategy that changed. And yesterday it did not work. And it that's the work. problem it with didn't. coaching. Like you used it in the second game, third, fourth, 
It's game. obvious that South the, Africa is that same. You should have changed. They already know, they already know how. South Africa read it and frustrated them. What South Africa did was a five-four-one. You have three. We have five. So they have five standing defenders. You can't breach that with two. You get. So South Africa will always punctuate your attack and hit you on the counter. That's what happened yesterday. I sat back, looked at that game. I'm like, is this coach blind? Change your tactics. Change now. You know, so going forward, I'm hoping that in the finals, it doesn't come with this 3-5-2 again. It needs to change it, it completely. Change it. It's, it it's becoming predictable. It. Yeah. But please, uh, special mention, Nigeria's goalkeeper is fantastic. Mm. Yeah, Stanley Wabali. He's a game changer. Yeah, he is. He's fantastic. He is. There's he nothing is. anybody but can say. Finally, they're playing as a unit. Playing as a but team. But I want to say something. It might sound like conspiracy theory. So, first things first. Victor Osime has scored about two or three goals in this tournament. And most of those goals have been cancelled. There are some VAR or something that they will find. And they Yesterday... One of those goals were, was also disallowed. I might the only one that thinks that mm. they were really trying so hard to make South Africa win that game. I felt that it was unnecessary. Um, they, it, there was, the goal was not offside. They just said that they had there was something wrong and they, they had not blown or something funny like that. The bottom line that is, that is that he scored. But you cancelled it and then gave the other team a, a, what's it called, a penalty. Okay. Keep in mind, the current president of South Africa, no. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm you just. know, uh, from the days mm -hmm. when we had Issa Ayatu as the Cameroonian, who was the president of CAF. I did not want to leave. And every time Nigeria played them, we lost, especially in the finals. So that's a conspiracy theory that, Dolupo is putting out there. I don't know about it. I was though. just saying. Her name is Dolupo. In case you people want to take <laughs> I her off. I was just saying. She's the one in black. Okay. Uh, he's wearing black too, but she. Is hey, she? <laughs> a woman is in there. I've said what I said. All I'm right. just saying. Okay. Anyway, Sha. So there are other stories. On. Also, before we leave that, um, mm. Nigeria is now going to be playing the host, Ivory Coast. That is another team from the get. After the group stages, people had written off. They almost did not even qualify for the round of 16. Now they're into the finals. With what they played with Nigeria, the second game, do you think Nigeria will beat them easier? Than we beat them at this tournament, and one of the reasons why they sacked their coach during the tournament and got an interim guy. But one thing that they have going for themselves is the home support. Yesterday, Nigeria, South Africa, there were over 21,000 Ivorians supporting South Africa against Nigeria. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Not so, that so <laughs> picture on Sunday at the stadium, how many people? Because yeah. anytime they are playing a game now, it's a public holiday in their country. They just want <laughs> to <laughs> shut down, joking. shut down everything. Now it's a Sunday, so you can imagine. That means there's no church, no nothing. Everybody's just going to the stadium anyway. against their favorite enemy. But historically, every time we beat them, the last three times we won AFCON, they yeah. were one of our stepping stones uh, historically. So, hey, Côte okay, Côte we'll see. au revoir. <laughs> au revoir. Any which way, let's move on from that. And um, let's go on to something else before we go into our topic of today. There was a judgment that was given um, a couple of days ago, which I think that we need, it needs, there's a bit of conversation that needs to be had about it. And it is the um, a court had ordered the federal government, in fact, given the se federal government seven days to um, fix prices of a couple of things. Um, the fixed prices of um, goods, mainly milk, rice, um, up onto bicycle and its spare parts, um, cars and its spare parts, and petroleum products. Sorry, I didn't get that. Judgment was the judgment asked, asked the federal government to oh. set prices for oh, essential okay. goods okay. and fuel okay. within seven days. Okay. So a federal high court in Ikoyi had ordered the federal government when the human rights lawyer Femi Falano had um, challenged the government's inaction on price control, okay. citing that there's actually a law um, to this effect. So 
does it with what's happening in Nigeria right now? How viable is this judgment, or will this judgment make sense? Be before uh, Femi responds, on that list of items that government must fix prices: milk, flour, salt, sugar, bicycles, motorcycles, vehicles, and of course, fuel. Okay. So the judgment is saying they must they fix. Oh. Yeah, yes, the they have to fix is prices. It's an existing law. Yeah, no. Yes, there is um, a section 4 of the Price Control Act. Mm. This apparently must be old law. Very. <laughs> Not very, <laughs> o very, very old, actually. It's um Price Control Act um, of 2004. Uh, oh. 20 so years ago, yeah, but not as like not old uh, like that. In the 60s. Picky, where they're born 20 years ago, <laughs> don't bump <bond> Picky. No, <laughs> no, I get what you're saying. I'm just saying that, uh, you know. Oh, <laughs> so, so that's what it is. Your, your take on this, um, I don't think it's a big problem, really, because um, if you look at it, I did, I did telling the government to reduce prices or to fix the lower price, they have not. True. Said, yeah, they are not giving. The okay, take it to saying, one naira. Fix. fix a price. So, if the government wants it to be sold at hundred dollars, at hundred naira. That's what the law says. They put it at hundred naira. It doesn't really make a difference to the government. Okay. Right. So because you are not saying reduce it or you know uh, jack it up. You are just saying fix it. The government will just leave it the way it is. <laughs> you know, let the market rate control it. Today, market rate is saying hundred naira. So. Or then I be. That's what so I don't think there's the So what with the with the market um the regulation. Not not even before people get to uh, petroleum now. Yes, maybe with petrol everything petroleum is deregulated everything. Actually, actually. The the all these items are deregulated. Yeah, with I'm even saying that with um, because we know that there are a lot of the items on these things that are imported. So and then there is also the issue of the dollar. How do you officially put a price cap on something that you don't you do not know you don't control the market? Literally, if you don't control the market, you can't um, determine. Like for example, now um, the petroleum products. Tomorrow, some companies start buying from Dangote or some start buying from Port Harcourt Refinery, and they're still not going to stop some people from importing. Your choice, yeah. Are you now going to put a price cap on because someone else is importing? For someone that is importing, it's automatic that his price is going to be slightly higher than the person buying from Lagos or maybe Port Harcourt. Uh, like, what is the what's the basis for now put? Because except you totally control the market, can you really put a price cap on anything? Let's let's think uh, let's think of it from the perspective of people that know the law, right? What I think now, what I think they were doing was bringing a law in for the government to step in when necessary. So if the government says start selling at market price, they've already put a cap price <laughs> price in it. They've done their job. They don't have to. If you, you fix know, daily you know, prices in, and yeah, all of that, and, and intervene all the time, they've already agreed that okay, we're selling at market price. Okay. And that's it. It's, it's already settled. So, do, does that flow into the oh. government's plan of bringing back the commodities board? You know, they're talking about, you know, we used to have a commodities so board way back when. there is supposed to be one. So, I'm, I'm looking at this Price Control Act. Um, the Section 5 of it is saying that this commod commodities board um, is supposed to fix a basic price for any controlled commodity. Now, what's your definition of controlled? Commodity in accordance to subsection 2 of this section fix the permitted variation for the commodity in respect of any state in accordance with the subsection 3. The basic price is the price which the opinion of the board, which in the opinion of the board properly represents in the case of goods produced in Nigeria, the cost of production of the commodity plus the manufacturer's interest. In case of imported goods, the duty paid landed cost of Nigeria plus, plus the imported profit. Now, that's the issue that is here. Because tomorrow, I buy this cup. It's, let's say it's imported. I buy this cup at 10 naira. And then dollar drops. And it becomes 5 naira. Do I have to do that all the time? Like, 
are we going are we going to have a daily price cap because except you have everything under control the way it's going is i don't think it's possible <clears throat> i think that the way around all this and it's very simple okay so uh, let's say uh, the cup is 10 naira right um, you know it's not it's never going to be zero naira if i put in my basic price at zero naira or 0 0.1 cup then i've already fixed the basic price mm -hmm. it gives you an hours to sell it from 0 0.1 cup up to Two. Oh, that's also a form of control i think the reason for that law it they're not saying government coming and start regulating everything the, the reason for that law is when it is necessary you can the intervene has a right to intervene to intervene but it also allows them not to intervene because they are it, it you know that's my you can own. allow the player to play yes. allow them play and you know They've already given you a range from zero to 100. They know you're not going to reach 100, and you're not going to come to zero. It is con That's a sort of a control. It allows them so to... So the best thing I went to court now, just... No, he hasn't, actually. What well, he has done... I, I think well. what he has done, what um, Mr. Fallon has done, is to start this conversation now. Because we, I know that this government was already talking about bringing back the commodities board. What he has done is to ensure that it's done. Because now by going to the law to reinterpret, let people hear that there's actually a law for it, then you cannot slack off on it. And we actually do need it, especially for commodities or goods that we produce locally, especially for those ones. Because there are a lot of things that I see that I don't understand. I get it when people import things and it's based on the volatility of the Naira. But the one I don't understand is the locally produced items that are more or less steady you know you know the cost of production you know the duration you know everything and the prices are going up on a daily and you don't understand why transportation has been constant now even at a uh, 600 or 615 or 670 per liter transportation the cost of transport has more or less been constant so what would make you for instance sell ground nuts to me at 1850 today tomorrow is one nine two one two two so <laughs> and I actually spoke to the woman. I'm like, Madam, why are you always increasing? The dollar. She said, Oh, Ghana, dollar. <laughs> I said, Dollar. <laughs> for granite. Is it a dollar? Is it granite? Is it granite? <laughs> anyway, uh, five, we're going to go to our topic. Talking yeah. about the dollar. Yeah, the so if you don't mind, let me. Let, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, Joe, but let me chip into what um, Chola was talking about, uh, Fala and you know. So there's something they call auditing the law, and that's what I think he's doing. Mm. Um, a lot of the laws we have are archaic, and there are people they call auditors. They come in, they test the law. When, when they test the law, you know, the government is forced to do something about it. Like you, this is what the law says: you must do this mm -hmm. right. And they, they know this does not work at this time. When the government says, oh, these people are pressurizing us to do this, they, um, they now move, you know, accordingly. move accordingly. And this is done usually in developed countries. You just find people, like the instance, they walk into police station and poke, you can poke the police in and you can, you know, do something. And the police will be looking at you. You, are, you want them to attack you. But if he attacks you, you know, you can now invoke, you can now, you know, invoke the law on him. So <laughs> you are testing him, you are testing them. And it keeps everybody on their toes. That's what mm. they're doing. So he's actually doing his job. Yeah. He's auditing. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Okay. That's, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. So I'm um, quickly talking about the dollar. Um, a few days ago, um, the federal government had talked about how they were going to um, start knocking off um, and then basically going after people, or more like the CBN had said they were going after people that were transacting in dollars in Nigeria, commodities. Um, you know, you're buying stuff or you're having a business in Nigeria and you are charging in dollars, which makes sense. It doesn't, I don't know why anybody would be charging in dollars in Nigeria. Now the EFCC has now said that they're going straight to schools, to institutions, especially private universities and institutions that charge their fees in dollars. Yeah, so a few weeks ago, the story broke about a former banker I'm not going to mention his name, that owns a private university in Nigeria that charges on 
he charges dollars. You get so his own story shed a lot of light on what's oh, going on. A lot of people yeah, do it. Yeah, there's a store you know? in Lagos that they charge dollars to. Yeah, just a regular departmental store. They charge dollars. The restaurants. Yeah, yeah. You pay the dollar rate. You pay the. You pay the dollar rate or bring the dollar. Or you the bring dollar. the dollar. And, and they probably convert it in their own rates. Yeah. Uh, of course. <laughs> or you bring the dollar. Or there, there are hotels in Lagos that charge hotels. dollars. I know that. So yeah. it's ridiculous. I personally think it's ridiculous. People people sell clothes and all that. They, it's all over social media. They're charging mm. in dollars. I'm like, okay. <laughs> anyway, ESC is saying that they're going right to it. Yeah, and they set they, up they, a tax force for that. They said that already and they're going after right now. They're starting with institutions. Well, I think the government should be careful in intervening in... So, I'm not saying it's right for you to charge dollars in a country where, you know, you spend that, everybody does that. But when you start meddling in the private sector, don't Too forget... Much. I like to play the devil's advocate. Don't forget Please do. that these people import rights and they have to replace... Yeah, so why not just do it with the current value? So what, what, what they are saying is, I'm going back to buy my cup in dollars. Today, Naira is 1,400. Tonight, tomorrow, Naira is 1,500. If you come to my store, I will tell you, give me equivalent in dollars. So indirectly, that's what they are saying. That look, I know that this is the price I want to set it, and it is based on Deposit my basis rate. is dollars. Because when I'm, you know, repurchasing it, I can't I'm buy using dollars to buy. It. to buy. It so anymore. make sure that when you come in, what is the dollar today? I put twenty dollars as my profit. That is what they are saying. But you know, it sounds like they are saying pay me in dollars. The thing is, they are just rating using. Mm. I, I think I think that category that you talked about is different from this one. Now there are some businesses in Nigeria charging dollars, and they are mainly services. Services. I was going to you say that, especially services. So now, and that's where the problem now, is. That's where it doesn't should, make sense. Yeah. They should find a way around that. But you see, I I am not an advocate of government intervening in anything. anything. Let the private sector deal with drive that. drive it. If somebody feels that the service. It's, it's not worth good for them. Yeah. Well, they and they want to uh, collect dollar dollars for it. They go to pay. Dollar, okay dollar rate is fine, but dollars, that's what they are saying now. Pay that dollars. Dollars. That is illegal. Yeah. But using the rates is, is fine. Is what I'm talking about. It's illegal for you to say, give so me that, when I know this is nice. It's worth they're talking about people who are actually, people actually like, asking for dollars. Yeah, you go, to the, you go to the school, you want to pay fees of your you child. Pay in you dollars. have to pay in that, dollars. That should be illegal. Yeah. So that's what they want to clamp down on. Yeah, I mean, you shouldn't be spending dollars in Nigeria, you know. Except, so you, except you're at an O1, O1 bear. O1 yes. bear, when you can. Maybe you spread, <laughs> y'all, y'all know, somebody just you went to jail. You can spread dollar in Nigeria. Okay, it's Naira that you cannot spray. It's I mean. Naira that you should not spray. So, I, I'm know. not there, oh. They are still spraying I was not there, oh, I'm you not there, oh. But Nigerians will always find a way. <laughs> I, 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 I have um, a way. We have, you can call me. We have a way. You have a way. <laughs> yeah, we just make our own Domi Naira, you know, you cannot tell me not to spray my Domi Naira. At least I did it recently. Domi? Yeah. Fake? Yeah. Isn't that supposed to be? No, it's paper. It's not Naira. It's just paper. I'm just, yes, I'm selling must paper we, to people. Must we spray at all? Ah, we the must. must we spray Edger, at please, it's, it's Edger. A culture. We have to spray. It's your eh? money. You spray it. It's, ah, your, ah, <laughs> it's your money. You can't. <laughs> That's, that's my question. Like, is well, do we have to spray? We they send problem. the money to some excuse, person. Excuse you, Edjo. Please. Yo. This O one bay industry is a multi billion dollar industry. And Mark Bay, wow. You're allowed to do whatever. Let them spray, oh, please. Please spray. <laughs> spray. <laughs> you know, but that's what it is. Uh, so we've, we've gone around the news and everything. And you see how we do it. We do it in the laid back way. But we're giving out a lot of information. We're educating and informing and entertaining. Now, we want to step it up. We're still going to be educating. We're still going to be informing. And we're also going to be entertaining. So let's just dive right into our main topic of the day, which has to do with the real estate industry. We want to look at, we want to key into your experience because the reason why we looked at this topic is we were looking for someone who has experience in two different climes. We don't get that all the time, you know. 
So we're looking for someone who also does the same business. Because some people are into real estate business in Nigeria and they're doing something entirely different outside Nigeria. But you, you're doing the same thing. So we want to be able to draw parallels. The idea is to see where we're doing it right and where we're getting it wrong and how we can improve on it. Because it's not enough to criticize. You must prefer solutions. It's about solutions, solutions, solutions. So in the real estate industry that you are into, first things first is to ask you your impressions of the Nigerian real estate industry, where it is now, and in, in a very short way, where it used to be and where it is now. So I see potentials in um, the um, Nigerian you know, economy, and especially real estate. Because if you look at it from the perspective of the need, a research I did some time ago was telling me that you know it's only about 17% of Nigerians that own property. 17? Wow. Yes. That wow. Own property. Wow. That is low. That's extremely low. So you have, and wow. that, that, that research would have been about 10 years ago, I did it. And so you have, the market is available. Wow. People need to own homes. So now the only problem we have now is purchasing power. Yeah. So, but most people don't have their, they don't own their homes. So, the potential is there, is for the government to do what they're supposed to do. That's so to create the an enabling environment okay, for Okay, for what you said now, you said enabling power. Yeah, people might not have so much of an enabling power, but in your own, um, in what you've seen, do you think, personally, and I, I think, do you think that, or let's say, for example, Lagos, do you think that the Real estate market is overpriced. It is overpriced. It is. It is. In fact, the biggest problem um, with the pricing of real estate is they don't have any. They don't. Okay, so it, it takes. It goes into a lot of things, and I, I don't know where to start from. The people that determine the price are not professionals. They don't even understand mm. the basics of pricing a property. If you come to meet me and say. I, I, I get into this kind of thing with people in, in Nigeria because when I ask them, agents come to me and I say they want to sell this house for 400 million. My first question is, how did you arrive right. at, at that 400 price? Million. They, they can't answer that question. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. So they keep on putting prices and raising prices. Remember when um, the former CBN said one website was one that was causing yeah yeah they were, just yeah. Putting, they were just putting prices yeah they just come and decide over you there is no regulation there is no basis there is no model you are using to arrive at your pricing mm. there are three basic ways you can price a produce to arrive at a the value value of a property is either you look at the income you use the income to mm. arrive at the value so that is usually investment property. Okay, I'm renting it at this amount of money. You can use it to find the cap rate and decide this is what the value is based on how much you are earning yeah, from that property. And then, is, uh, then the second one is, the most popular one is the comparison, which we try to do here, but because we don't have data. Comparison is, okay, Shola sold his own for 100,000. I'm next door. I'm selling my own at 100,000. Comparison. But the problem is, is it the same thing that you have? Value. Shola doesn't, apart from the fact that I don't know how many square footage, I don't yeah, know what the finishing, exactly. you know. Yeah, exactly. I'm not even sure Shola, Shola sold it at 100 million. Shola could have sold it at 80, and he's saying I sold it at 100. 100. Oh. There's no data that shows, it shows that. Exactly. So everybody's just doing guesswork. So even comparison itself is not... It's uh, faulty. It's not empirical. Yeah. Yeah. So then um, the last one is uh, cost. So, I mean, we, we cost it and say, okay, look, this is, it cost me 100 million to build this property. I want to make 30% on it. I'll say I want 130. Those are the three basic ways you can use to value a property. Right. These people don't know, understand. They don't. They just come up with a price on their head and say, I want to sell this property for 500 million. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, where's the place of estate valuers in all of this? Those are the estate valuers are supposed to be doing that. And I think they understand it. Uh, but uh, I don't think people... So uh, in, a, in the process of selling a property, you're supposed to bring in... Bankers, who banks did it, do it in Nigeria. Because I think I've taken a loan from a bank in Nigeria to buy a property once. 
and they had to they call in the, the they did their own evaluation they, they will do it but most times when you buy property you know uh, buyer and seller here they just bring just estate. talk okay you bring an estate valuer in to value the property and say look this is what it's supposed to be and they will start negotiating based on that okay and of course the estate valuers understand how to arrive at value they, they, understand. they understand the entire Immediately. system so so with that how vi viable really is the nigerian market let's let's compare it with um the american real estate market how viable is it like okay if someone wants to go into it now would you rather because putting a lot of things into um consideration um what where would you say makes more sense in, in terms of investing in terms of investing what's the viability of the market well, or ordinarily there is opportunity in nigeria but the problem now i think the biggest problem we have now is the volatility of the Naira, Naira. where you know what mm. if i bring in my money i don't even know what value is going to be there tomorrow and so that's why you know, having a more stable currency, investing in a more stable currency for now is it's safe. But there's still opportunities. There's still a lot of opportunities. We should, uh, and that's why, you know, I, I keep on putting my eye on a, in, in a country, in Africa and Nigeria, too, there is still opportunity. There is so much to be done. We just need to start putting things right. So viability, yes, there is enough demand. Right, mm -hmm. it's just the right process, putting in all the necessary things to make this thing jump start. Um, the other countries we look at to go and invest, they put in those things, that's why it's working. But the markets, I would say, is even saturated compared to us. The opportunities are more here. Yeah. We're not just putting in place what we need to put in place. And I don't know what the problem is. Is either we don't know what we are supposed to be doing, or the government does not want to do it. There are very simple solutions that will just kick off things. Okay, like what? Give us a few. So, you know what we're talking about, we spoke about, you know, purchasing power. It's very easy. Give the people money and let them buy. That's mortgage. Nobody buys anything in the U.S. with their cash. With their cash, yeah. It does not make sense, especially when you're talking about houses or cars. And I think Tinubu said it, one of the, you know, you don't go have 400 million on a house. Boom. Just like you that. You've sucked up every cash flow. That money, you can use it for so many other things and increase your return. Right. So the bank has something to gain. They give you a loan. They put interest rate on it. You use their money. And, and that the, money is and coming the property. from CBN and it's coming from investment. So the economy. And it so, keeps going Yeah. On. So when, when, ten, when only five people is buying, but you give them money and 300 people is buying, the economy is very good. More people, developers are building, more people are buying, more suppliers are coming in, more skills are being made. Everything just jump starts. You know, the question people always say is, we give Nigerians money, they will run away. We put ah. the structure in place. There are solutions, ah. especially now where we have technology. These things are very simple. You know, you just have to have the people that have the mindset to do it. So I'm not sure. Sometimes I wonder maybe they don't know what to do or they don't know that's what they are supposed to be doing but there are simple solutions okay um there's the issue also of land grabbing and um, we have a local name for omonile the people who are falling prey to these things or a lot of people don't understand can you give people pointers on how to navigate this especially if you're buying land in lagos land grabbing is not uncommon <laughs> in abroad <laughs> are you serious i'm telling you even in a country like the u.s it's are you serious <laughs> okay what is the, what is the basis let's of land grabbing? it is the title hmm. once the title is you, you don't have a uh, perfect document or something there's no perfect doc document but once you don't have a uh, standard process of getting it so one of the biggest problems you have is you can buy a property in nigeria and take 20 years for you to get a title mm. which gives you space for, space for anybody to say, just be funny property. two there is no data you can't even trace who sold this to this and that i bought a property in the u.s once before and, and this might explain it a little bit better to you and um <coughs> when i got the prop when i bought the property the 
I didn't have a problem. I, I bought a land that like built on it. I didn't have it was the the there is a there are some people we call that is the the way the structure um property pro, uh, property transaction in yeah. the US is you have to go through what is called a title house, which are essentially lawyers. Let me, they are not really lawyers, but they are people trained to look at the title and see whether you know you are buying from the right person. Yes, yeah. and so, on. so they do a search on the title. In Nigeria, we call your lawyer to go and do a search. The title house, do, they, they train it. They have license to do that. So I went to the title house. They said it was good. You know, in fact, I've done like two transactions like that. And then I purchased the, title, the property, the land, and I built on it. When I wanted to sell it, the, the second title house I went to came back and said, there is a problem with that pi title. Okay. You know. Uh oh. And that's you know, I don't want to go into what trauma it took me on because I used cash. Everything I had was on it. Now the issue was that title house went back forty years. Oh wow. In search and find out that at some point there is what they call a chain of owners. You know, Femi bought it and sold it to some those the the Rupo, the Rupo sold it and sold it to Shola. And it would have started from the time when the Indians yeah. sold it to the American government. So it's just like the time when uh, Nigerian natives sold it to the federal government of Nigeria. That's when you start your search from. They went back 40 years and found out that there was a break in chain of the title wow. where somebody sold it to somebody but did not record it or there was no proof or no receipt. So they were telling me, look, this title is faulty. You need to go back 40 years ago and find out people that are dead go and link that title to, we know this guy bought it from this guy, but there is no documentary. There is a, mm -hmm. So it threw the transaction off balance and the, the buyer left. So, or, you know, I was a little bit, you know, then somebody else said, you know, well, why don't, another buyer came. The buyer was interested. It was like, well, we, sh we should go to another title house. So we went to another title house and the guys did the search and said their property was okay. I said, now, what's the difference between you and the other guy? They said, they don't do more than 10 years. Uh. <laughs> so they, they are not going uh, back as much as 40 years so but it doesn't make them wrong you're just not doing as much so as they're doing there's no perfect document if you really want to find a fault in the title there will, will always find be something fault. somebody can come in and i bought a property in Abuja. i have a property in abuja right now that i bought and suddenly i went there one day and i found them building ah. planting trees and all <laughs> right, from federal government I bought the property from federal uh, government, F FTC. Over. So I went to FTC and said, ah, they said, you know what, well, you have to give us money, we have to go and talk to people. But, you know, you, you gave me an offer. Uh, yeah. Why do you have to go and talk to someone else? Uh, somebody that is you know, encumbering on my property? They said, well, as at the time when the federal government came into Abuja or something, we didn't settle everybody. So there's a flaw in the title. So imagine there's a flaw in the title in FCT. You can it's always find a flaw on any title uh, if you have a good somebody to penetrate or a good lawyer. So there's no perfect document. But what you want to do is put the data up there. You want to have a perfect data. You have to have, you know, so people can see what is going on. So the problem with Nigeria is there is no data. Anybody just going to come and say... Let me read something to you. Sorry. Um, it was a few weeks ago. Last month, actually. Lagos State GIS portal was launched. E-GIS portal. And um, according to the governor... The Electronic Geographic Information System, which is what you're more or less referring to, portal, is an online uh, portal owner that you can actually use for land search, documentations, and everything, and actually more or less eliminates some of the process of mm -hmm. having to go through civil servants and all of that to get your documentation and get your data. Now, I don't know how far back they would have uploaded data on it, but do you think this is a step in the right direction? Should this not become like a national thing than a Lagos thing? Lagos states have always been a pioneer in starting all these new ideas, and that is the right way to go. Um, so data are not, you know, you don't comprise, you don't put together data in a day. As you it go takes by, time. It gets, it, it, it gets get on better. Building up on the data and all that, and it gets better. So yeah, they've started on that, and then they keep on improving on it. Okay. According to them. It reduces processing time. Like you said, it takes decades or it years. Is, yeah. so <laughs> and <laughs> governor's consent too can now be sought <laughs> online. Yes. So even before I buy a property in the US, I can do I know how to do a lot of search to know, you know, if 
who I'm talking to is the owner. The real the owner. Owner. So Before I go to the title house. So you should make this data available. So I make all these kind of problems. So if you come to me and you're saying I own this property and I search it, you're not, you're not, I won't even start conversation with you. But in this case here in Nigeria, you don't even you know. Don't know. No, you it, don't know. You don't know. That's why a lot of people s- just sell one land to like four or five different people and it's... Uh, and you will go to that community and you'll be saying, Do you know this guy? Ah, wow, he's, he's the owner. They don't, they, they don't go and it's not the owner. They say, oh, okay, I know him. Yeah. Ah. You know, they just assume he's the owner, you know. But data does not lie. Like, mm. you know, if, you know, so once you put in that in place, uh, that's that's gonna help. And, and and there's one other big thing I noticed that we need to put in place. And this is part of where, you know, it, it's also bringing a lot it, it bring confidence to real estate transaction and also helps other industry to make money. So the ti- the people that do the title search, they also give you insurance. Okay. And insurance is expensive. So they go back to the insurance company. I don't know the arrangement between the title search people, the title house and insurance, but the insurance, we, they will give you insurance as well. I did the search on this property. Yeah, and then... If you have a title problem, come back to me or go to my insurance, they will pay you. We don't have that in Nigeria. So they, they should put all those in place. The, the, the thing, why I sometimes I wonder what is going on is, do the people making laws in this country, maybe they don't know what is going on elsewhere. These things are, the solutions are already been made by all these countries. Just go there. You don't need to reinvent doing. the wheel. Is that where it's there. people that I don't know what's going on, they, 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 they just say in the Senate, and discuss but <laughs> no, but this is okay. not so difficult. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, also, another thing that I think is plaguing um, real estate in Lagos at the, the, these days, Nigeria, is you you had talked about being also being a builder, the standardization of buildings, the kind of things that um, is being built. We hear in Lagos one building is collapsing, another is, what's it called? And these days, especially when maybe you go out to, you're looking for a house to rent, you see the ridiculous nonsense that people build, all in the name of their building house. The, if it's not the size, it is the design, the or quality. even the quality of what they're building. It's ridiculous. And you're wondering, like, okay, so how can the, um, how can the, sector get better if people don't even believe in because now you build for people to buy Mm -hmm. how do i believe that everybody is not the same ridiculous person across board there is already a solution to that it's just implementation i think i mean um people give approval in Alausa, they give approval. Yeah. They have engineers, they have you know people that are going to look into your plan and say this property is good to go. They give approval. And they're supposed to be overseen at some stage and coming in and say you are following plan. The where there's a problem is they don't co- I don't know monitoring. It, yeah, so they, they are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. It's mm-hmm. either they don't come when they come in, something happens mm-hmm. in between and mm-hmm. they overlook at it, they, they overlook it and don't allow you to build rubbish. Mm. So, once they approve a plan, you should build according to, to the, the plan. plan. What the government should do is find a way of implementing. They have the law. They just need to implement it. Put the right people in place to make sure these things are implemented. Mm. You know, there are so many things that are already available, but maybe we Africans have a problem with implementing. Mm. I don't know, but, uh, you know, I mean, when you get to the airport, you go to places, you know they have it. But they are not doing it. So it's just a matter of implementation. The law is there. It's so it's enforcement, it's monitoring. Enforcement, yes, implementing what they have planned to. This is the way we're supposed to do it. Procedures and everything. They will we've, been, we've been advocating for a whistleblower system, especially for that sector, mm. that will allow... We know we say one of our payoffs here is if you see something, say something. That will allow the regular guy, like me, myself, and any of the guys in the studio, observe something and maybe take a picture or make a video and have a portal or a number to say, there's a building construction going on on number XYZ on OPP Street. I think there's something wrong. Because I feel that they also have a manpower problem. They cannot transverse the entire length and breadth of Lagos or Nigeria. 
But if they create a whistleblower system, do you think it will help help them, you know, get the information that they require also? First of all, the government shouldn't have the manpower because create this part of creating jobs. Employ more people. You know, increase your uh, permit cost. Every time you go to inspect, charge them. This is people that are developing. They are, so you shouldn't have a problem employing people. You make money from that. And create more jobs. And create more jobs. Mm. They know what to do. It's very simple. <laughs> they are not just doing it. Why? why I, I'm not in government, so I don't know the politics. I don't know what's going on. So the, what to do is there. Your second question is I got to... Yeah, as in creating a whistleblower system. So the, the, I think they are already whistleblowers. This is part of what we are talking about. There are people that are talking. But do they act? When you report, even when you go to a night police station, I say, oh, God, somebody you hit somebody, they will tell you. You know the way? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So people get yeah. frustrated. They don't even bother yeah. anymore. And they just walk away. And they, they see crime going on or see something wrong. And they say, well, even if you go to court, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. Yeah. So we, t we need to instill... We need to... Instill but discipline and in, in, like laws. build confidence in, in the people. We have it. Hmm. We just need to, you know, be serious we, about it. Yeah. Um. Okay. Our time is actually far spent. But before we leave, I was going to also ask finally that, um, for people that want to go into um the real estate business, like in Nigeria, right now, are there actually like um ways of education because um other than maybe like going to school that's their um professional courses and all that because i i personally don't think a lot of people i think some people just have money and they just you know or if you just be open companies because personally i don't think that a lot of these are so-called developers or law are very very um learned so Real estate is quite vast, and there are different angles. You the value chain. And different professionals in the, in the system. Estate. You don't have to be. Being a developer, you're just the person that is coordinating a, a project. They are like the project manager. You put, bring in the funds, bring in the builder, bring in the design, bring in, and make sure everybody goes. So I don't think you need a license or you need to be educated to do that. It's just like somebody starting a business. Now, if it is not a professional business, if you are not starting a law firm, or you are starting a, a getting, you can own a business and yeah. put professionals to run it. That's that's what developers do. But then you have engineers; those have to be licensed. You have, you know, architects, architects. You have every other professional in it. Masons, so, all sorts. Yeah, it's all going up. Then there is enough data. There's enough information out there for people to educate. A lot of the developers, like you said, Dunupo. They don't really understand a lot of things. They just yeah. get in there and say, oh, I have money, let me do it. Yeah. I went into a property in Lekki yesterday. I was sad, and I thought about it overnight. <laughs> this guy would have spent 700 million or 800 million on his property. It was rubbish from design stage. You know, I was interested, and I said I went to inspect. The first thing I was like, why have you not sold? This thing is completed. From the outside, it looked okay. But when I walked in, the layout was horrible for a property on Admiralty wow. Phase 1. The layout was horrible. It was, I can't think who the architect is. It's a crime. <laughs> he should be arrested. Wow. He, everything was wrong. Circuits were narrow, you know. I, I just, I don't even know where to start from. And this guy has spent a lot. So the thing I thought was that, when they were designing, did you look at the design? Mm -hmm. When they were constructing, using your money, did you not go to site to look? So the developer must be somebody that does not know anything. He mm -hmm. did not, you know, increase his knowledge or he did not learn. These, these things are here. You can learn a lot of things, you know, just, just going on the internet. And you know how to oversee these kind of projects. All right, I, I like the look what said because we've not even scratched the surface. For me, there are a whole lot of stuff. I, I, we wanted to talk to you about skills in the industry. You know, she said something about people not being learned enough and all of that. You know, I don't know if we have time to do that. We kind of don't have time. Okay. <laughs> you know, but there's a whole lot that I wish we could. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a part two or something, but there's still things to touch on this industry. And 
at the end of the day, we would have preferred a lot of solutions for government, for individuals, yeah. and for corporate bodies. Oh, no, yeah, too. he has. He has do definitely, definitely done a lot. I hope that you would uh, come back. Because, of course, this I conversation think. has definitely not ended. Yeah. Lagos is even enough, just sitting with Lagos State yeah. alone and the things that happen alone, and people getting into all sorts of things, mm -hmm. buying all sorts of things, getting into all sorts of deals and all that is enough to talk about. But definitely, but at this time, we are um, out of time and we will um, we'll be back again um, at 3 p.m. West African time tomorrow to give you another wonderful edition of The Bar. But we want to thank our guests. Thank you very, very thank much well. for coming today. We definitely, definitely learned a lot. We would, I hope that people are, lis people are listening and watching and they've learned a lot, but um, we hope that they will come back to give us more I of our we'll ideas. We'll be happy to come back. I enjoyed it. Thank yeah, you. And, right. and for those of you who are watching, before we leave, you can also catch the podcast on Spotify and AfriPods yes. and all the other podcast platforms in a few uh, moments from now. So just go check it out. You can also listen over and over again. Yeah, There's a lot of knowledge in this. All right. So peace and we'll be back again 3 p.m. tomorrow. <laughs>